All right, so this is a continuation from uh, the last video that I did for the example. So I'm going to show you how to do some of this stuff using um, the TI-84 graphing calculator. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to get the data in the calculator. So I'm just going to go to the stats menu. I already have that typed in. So if you choose stats and edit, you'll see that I typed the data in. If you need a minute, just pause the video and you can type the data into your graphing calculator. To summarize the, the statistics, I'm not going to worry about doing that right now, but um, if you go back into the stats menu, you would just choose the calculate menu and choose one variable stats and tell it which list you want to analyze and it would give you the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, So one of the things that I did is I created a, a box plot to take a look at. So I'm going to show you real quickly how to do the box plot or refresh your memory on how to do the box plot. So first I'm going to exit out of here. And if you hit the second button, go to Y equals, that'll open up your stat plot menu. I'm going to choose plot number one. And when that comes up, that's going to be on. The next thing it asks me is what type I want to use. Um, I'm going to go down below and I'm going to choose the box plot with outliers. Sometimes this is referred to as a modified box plot. So you can see the lights blinking on it. You have to hit enter to select that one. And my data is stored in list one. The frequency is going to remain one. And I'm going to leave that as color blue. And so one of the cool things with this is you can actually do two plots at once. So I'm going to go back up to the top, go over to the right, choose plot two and hit enter. So plot one is on right now. Plot two is currently off. I'm going to turn that on. So I'm going to hit enter and select on. And then go down to type and choose the box plot with outliers, which is the modified box plot. And for the uh, list, instead of list one, I'm going to use list two, all right? So second and then the number two, because that's where the data was stored for the test scores of the female. List one was the, were the test scores of male. And I'm going to use red for the female so we can differentiate between the two. And everything else should remain the same right here. So uh, to get the graph, um, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the zoom. And then I'm going to choose option number nine. Okay, when it does this, it'll plot both of the box plots in the appropriate window. Remember, I used blue for the, the boys or the men and red for the women. So you can see both of those uh, box plots in a parallel box plot format. So it's kind of nice to be able to see that and take a look at it. Again, we're looking to see if they're symmetric and if there's any outliers in here. You can see there's some slight skewness in the males and even on, in the females probably a little bit, but there's no outliers in there. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to um, uh, generate some of the other information like our test statistic and our p-value. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to use the built-in function in the stat menu in order to get the test statistic and the p-value. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the stats button and that'll bring, bring me back here. And I'm going to go over to tests. And if you scroll all the way down to uh, the two sample t-test. This is our two-sample t-test right there. And there's a couple different two-sample t-tests that we can choose from. So I use data. So I'm going to leave data as my option. The, uh, the data for the males was stored in list one and the data for the females was stored in list two. The frequency for both of those lists is one. And then um, right down here, this is our, our alternative hypothesis. It's asking us what is the appropriate alternative hypothesis for this problem. If you recall, we said <clears throat> that males performed better than females on average. So we're going to scroll over and we're going to change this to the greater than symbol. So you highlight it and hit enter to select that. And the type of test we were doing was an unpooled t-test. In other words, we're not pooling the variance. And I'm not going to talk about that right now, but an unpooled t-test, we're going to choose the option of no right here. And then we're going to go down and hit calculate. So just make sure no is in black. And when you hit enter, it's going to go through and it's going to tell you what the alternative hypothesis is. The mean of the males is greater than the mean of the females for those average test scores. Here's our test statistic, which I denoted as T star, which is 0.494. Below that is our p-value. Here's the degrees of freedom using that big messy formula. Um, and then our mean in, for both the uh, males and females is given right here. Remember the mean of the males is group one and the mean of females is group two. So those are the one and two subscripts respectively. Here's the standard deviations. And if you scroll down, it'll give... Uh, um, the sample size is the last, so it summarizes those values for us, okay? So the, the other thing that I want to show you is how you get the p-value using the tcdf function, all right? 
So this is your two sample t tests. This gives you your test statistic and your p value. But if you had to use your, uh, if you were, if you knew the upper and lower bound and the degrees of freedom, and you wanted to use the tcdf function, this is the way that you would do that. Okay. So you're going to go hit the second button, and you're going to choose vars, and that gives you the distribution menu. The distr is above that. So the the distribution that we're going to use is the tcdf. And for those of you with a new newer calculator, um, I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool. If you have if you have that highlighted and you hit the addition sign, the plus sign, it'll kind of tell you what the syntax is for typing that in. If you have an older calculator, I don't believe all of them do that. It asks what the lower bound is and what the upper bound is and what the degrees of freedom are. Okay, so it'll be a little bit different because we're rounding some of these values. So if you recall, um, our lower bound in this was. Um, uh, 0.494 and then we have to separate it with a comma and then our upper bound I used 1 million for that and then separate that with a comma and then the degrees of freedom that I used were 11 and then we just close the parentheses and then um, if you hit the paste button down here it'll paste it alright so um, What did I do? Right there. And it took those values out. So uh, 0 0.494 comma 1 million. Comma 11. And then close parentheses. And then enter. And it should paste that. You can see the TCDF function. This is the way it'll look on most of your calculators if you have an older one. And then we just hit enter and that'll spit out the results and you can see it's the 0 0.3155 which is what we had before all right so this will give you enough information on how to use your calculator for the um, independent sample t-test uh, using an unpooled variance